Porcupines are seldom eaten in Western culture, but are very popular in Southeast Asia, particularly Vietnam, where the prominent use of them as a food source has contributed to declines in porcupine populations. The naturalist William J. Long reported the taste of the North American porcupine as vile and maladorous and delightful only to a lover of strong cheese. With regards to a Maine state law that restricted the killing of porcupines to keep them available as emergency game for people lost in the woods, he noted, it is undoubtedly a good law, but I cannot now imagine anyone being grateful for it, unless the stern alternative were death or porcupine. More commonly, their quills and guard hairs are used for traditional decorative clothing. For example, their guard hairs are used in the creation of the Native American, porky roach, headdress. The main quills may be dyed, and then applied in combination with thread to embellish leather accessories such as knife sheaths and leather bags. Lakota women would harvest the quills for quillwork by throwing a blanket over a porcupine and retrieving the quills it left stuck in the blanket. The presence of barbs, acting like anchors, makes it more painful to remove a quill that has pierced the skin. The shape of the barbs makes the quills more effective, both for penetrating the skin and for remaining in place. The quills have inspired research for such applications as the design of hypodermic needles and surgical staples. In contrast to the current design for surgical staples, the porcupine quill and barb design would allow easy and painless insertion, as the staple would stay in the skin using the anchored barb design rather than being bent under the skin like traditional staples. The porcupine is often used as a symbol of American libertarianism due to its natural embodiment of defensiveness and the non-aggression principle. Porcupines are large rodents with coats of sharp spines, or quills, that protect them against predation. The term covers two families of animals, the Old World porcupines of family Hystricity, and the New World porcupines of family Arethizontidae. Both families belong to the infraorder Hystricognathy within the profoundly diverse order Rodensa and display superficially similar coats of rigid or semi-rigid quills which are modified hairs composed of keratin. Despite this, the two groups are distinct from one another and are not closely related to each other within the hystrocognathy. The largest species of porcupine is the third largest living rodent in the world after the capybara and beaver. The old world porcupines live in Italy, Asia, western and southern, and most of Africa. They are large, terrestrial, and strictly nocturnal. In taxonomic terms, they form the family hystricity. The new world porcupines are indigenous to North America and northern South America. They live in wooded areas and can climb trees, where some species spend their entire lives. They are less strictly nocturnal than their old world counterparts, and generally smaller. In taxonomic terms, they form the family Arethizontidae. Porcupine's coloration consists of various shades of brown, gray and white. Porcupine's spiny protection resembles that of the unrelated Aranachomorph hedgehogs and Australian monotreme echidnas as well as Tenrecid tenrex. Porcupines occupy a small range of habitats in tropical and temperate parts of Asia, southern Europe, Africa, and North and South America. They live in forests and deserts, rocky outcrops, and hillsides. Some New World porcupines live in trees, but Old World porcupines prefer a rocky environment. Porcupines can be found on rocky areas up to 3,700 meters high. They are generally nocturnal, but are occasionally active during daylight. Defensive behavior displays in a porcupine depend on sight, scent, and sound. Often, these displays are shown when a porcupine becomes agitated or annoyed. There are four main displays seen in a porcupine which are quill erection, teeth clattering, emitting of odor, and attack. These displays are ranked from least to most aggressive. A porcupine's coloring aids in part of its defense as most of the predators are nocturnal and color blind. A porcupine's markings are black and white. The dark body and coarse hair of the porcupine are a dark brown, black and when quills are raised, present a white strip down its back mimicking the look of a skunk. This, along with the raising of the sharp quills, deters predators. Along with the raising of the quills, porcupines clatter their teeth to warn predators not to approach. The incisors vibrate against each other, the strike zone shifts back and the cheek teeth clatter. This behavior is often paired with body shivering which is used to further display the dangerous quills. The rattling of quills is aided by the hollow quills at the back end of the porcupine. The use of odor is when the sight and sound have failed. An unpleasant scent is produced from the skin above the tail in times of stress, and is often seen with quill erection. 
If the above processes fail, the porcupine will attack by running sideways or backwards into predators. A porcupine's tail can also be swung in the direction of the predator. If contact is made, the quills could be impaled into the predator causing injury or death. Porcupine's quills, or spines, take on various forms, depending on the species, but all are modified hairs coated with thick plates of keratin, and embedded in the skin musculature. Old world porcupines have quills embedded in clusters, whereas in new world porcupines, single quills are interspersed with bristles, underfur, and hair. Quills are released by contact or may drop out when the porcupine shakes its body. New quills grow to replace lost ones. Despite what is commonly believed, porcupines do not have the ability to launch their quills at range. There are some possible antibiotic properties within the quills, specifically associated with the free fatty acids coating the quills. The antibiotic properties are believed to aid a porcupine that has suffered from self-injury.